Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket coming at you today with a continuation on my look at Russian sidearms. A while back I brought to you this beautiful uh, TT-33 made in the Russia in the Tula factory. My grandfather brought this home from Vietnam and this is a, a wonderful piece of uh, family history for The Bucket and uh, I've really enjoyed bringing uh, this to you. So I went out <coughs> and I got myself a hold of one of these. Now this right here is an M18 95 Russian Nagant revolver. Uh, this particular version that I got, I picked up on a trade. It comes with a holster, although I don't read the Russian. It looks like it says 1976, so it's not as old as the firearm, but did come with the cleaning rod that came with it. This is how they would carry it. They would have some spare ammo in that pocket. May have even had a cleaning tool. Didn't come with this particular one. Uh, I know a lot of people are into the holsters. They like the kits. They like the um, rigs, as they're often referred to. Not as big of a deal for me, but it's kind of a cool little extra. But again, this is the prize. This is the bell of the ball right here. This this is a Tula factory made in 1930 Russian Nagant revolver. Now, uh, it's referred to as an 1895 because that's, of course, when it was adopted um, by the Russians. And uh, this is way back when cavalry was really, really um, the, the, the bell of the ball, per se, in the military. That's a what this was really designed for. So mounted horsemen would have one of these on their hip. And this was really designed by the and adopted by the Imperial Russians. Now, you know, they have a, a vast empire that goes all the way from Serbia to the steppes to the Balkans uh, to really Eastern Europe. And they have some unique needs. So when we look at this firearm now, we go, man, why would, why would you even want this particular thing? And if you think about what it was being used for and what was being adopted for, it really was a, a, a pretty neat little option. And a few years back, uh, they they flooded the market with these because the Russians made millions of these things, and you could pick these things up for under a hundred bucks. And just like all military surplus, you end up in a situation where you know they're cheap for a while, but when they run out, the value just goes up dramatically. And you see the same thing with these Nagants. You know, you were picking these up for sub a hundred dollars, and uh, I had a hard time finding one for under four. $400. And so I was really excited when I got this one. Uh, and it had an opportunity to, to get my hands on it. Now, these were double action, single action revolvers. When they first came out for the Imperial uh, Army, the Russians didn't trust their soldiers. So the uh, officers got the double actions and the regular foot soldiers, the police, they got a single action version. When the uh, Russian Revolution happened, the Soviet Revolution happened, they uh, ditched the single action and just uh, went to directly to double action for all. Now what makes this one a little bit unique is it's a unique gas sealed system. So uh, if you can see, and with most revolvers, you end up with uh, this cylinder gap, and that's where the bullet goes through the cylinder and there's this gap and it goes into the barrel and then some of the gas that propels the bullet vents off which it makes revolvers have a little bit less power uh, or pound uh, for pound a little bit less power uh, power than the semi-automatic uh, counterparts so they the Nagant brothers Leon and Emile decided to come up with a unique idea so as you cock the hammer the cylinder actually cams forward and creates a light seal on the cylinder. And then that way, when the uh, hammer hits the uh, primer and causes the bullet to go out, less gas escapes out and allows for more energy. Then when you pull the trigger and the hammer comes down, and you release, it opens it back up again to allow you to index the next cylinder and it will go back into a firing position. 
really pretty a unique system. A lot of people will talk about, and you see it a lot on the internet about how these are suppressor ready. And there is some uh, truth to that. That being said, it's... You know, that really wasn't what it was designed for. This, the uh, the Nagant brothers were really trying to uh, come up with the best possible revolver design that they could. And why we look back on it and think it's a little silly is shortly after this is made, uh, the John Moses Browning comes out with the... Uh, Model 1900, which really becomes the first inexpensive uh, semi-auto loading pistol that could, you know, be put into place for militaries. Now, I know the Borchard came out before that and the Luger was out before that, but the Luger had some problems in the fact that it was very expensive and it had so many small integral parts that it could be ammo sensitive and it could also be uh, a little bit finicky in different weather. And for the Russians, that's a problem. So the Nagant brothers were really trying to master and get the best revolver they can. And hindsight being 2020, they probably could have been focusing a little bit more on auto loaders and it would have done them a little bit more good. Now, what's unique about this is even when the Russians came out with the Tokarev, they had the tooling uh, to make these in Russia. So all throughout World War I, all through World War II, they are producing these. And they had uh, train station guards and policemen in certain areas of Russia that were still carrying these up until the 90s. They didn't stop making these until the 50s. And these were just workhorse guns. One of the great things about revolvers is very little to go wrong with them and these were robust and could handle the harsh uh weather that you would experience in all of russia so uh this gun will index you do not need to put it on a half cock it does have this door on it when you want to unload this is a solid framed gun so you would pull out this um, rod swing it over and then you could kick out your round. Now, that being said, uh, a lot of people complain about, well, this is not the best system. But again, think about what the Russians want. They want a sturdy, good firearm that is going to be able to get you seven rounds downrange really, really quickly. And if you think about how hard it would be to load a revolver on horseback, realistically, you're not reloading a revolver on horseback. I'm sure there was some genius out there that could do it, but the vast majority could not. So this system was not a, a really down, down system uh, for the Russians. They thought it was pretty good. Now, to disassemble this firearm, you go ahead and you do it again. Now, if you look, when this swings over, it will actually obstruct that pin, which, again, a lot of people complain about how that's not a good design, but actually it's a great design because then this pin is never going to accidentally come out when you're on horseback again. So once you line it up just right, it will swing out, and then your cylinder comes out. With the cylinder out, I can go ahead and show you some unique features about it. So if you look, you'll see that there's a little bit of a recess here. And when you have this unique 765 by 30 MMR uh, round, you will actually see that the bullet is within the case. And there's actually kind of a little rim on here and that rim becomes very important for uh, how this this gun works so you can see it good when i put it in the cylinder it will actually protrude a little bit um, out of the cylinder which will help actually go into that forcing cone on the barrel which will give it even a better seal and so that's how uh, these this ammo works now I got a box of this uh, PPU stuff uh, there for a while they were almost giving away the uh, Russian surplus stuff I always go away from the Russian surplus uh, not because the rounds are bad but uh, they have been known to be corrosive 
and that can be a problem. Now, the problem with this is, is these, a box of this is still going to set you back about 40 bucks. So what um, the importers did on this gun, which was really kind of cool, is they actually gave you another cylinder. And this cylinder, because 32 ACP is the same diameter of bullet, uh, gives you a 32 ACP cylinder. And this is a little bit cheaper uh, for the average uh, person to be able to go ahead and shoot. So this is a really, really neat option, uh, which I'm excited to bring this to you as well. So the problem is, is that you do have this spring-loaded uh, little dealy booper, which is going to end up making it possible for your... Uh, cylinder to go back and forth and create that seal and it will not work unless you have one in it so i'm actually going to show you there is a little oh, i'll show it to you right here there's a little indention and then there is a little divot right there let me see if i can get that on camera and you have to line those two up and when you do it's pretty easy you go in and just spin it and then she's ready to install and installing is pretty much just the same thing in the opposite it is it does take a little bit of finesse and a little bit of jiggly booping and once you do it you go ahead and look down there you put your pin back in and adjust a little bit and you are ready to go and again, it will index the exact same way. Now you'll notice on um, this, it still has that seal because it wants to seal up and it will uh, create a situation where theoretically you could suppress this again. Um, and I'm excited to see how the 32 compares to the 762 Nagant round. Uh, I, you know, it's, I, I'm excited to see how, uh, which one is better, which one has more kick, which one has less kick, and go, to, to bring that to you. So, one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about is disassembly. Now, one of the things that the Russians did is they were a big fan of, uh, they were a big fan of, re-arsenaling guns which meant if they ended up with two broken guns they would mix and match the pieces uh, so they could end up you know having the gun last longer and because of that matching serial numbers are not necessarily going to be you're, you're not a hundred percent guaranteed that that is actually going to be how it came out of the factory now if you look on mine my serial number here is 32415. And right down here, you can actually see a 415 coming through. And so you do know that this frame and this play and the, this frame matches up down here. Now, one of the things that you can do to, to kind of verify a little bit more is you could take a screwdriver. This screw right here is the screw that has the spring-loaded catch to for the gate. But this screw right here actually holds the plate in place. It's fairly easy to come out, just like that. And then we go ahead and flip the gun over. And... Ah! Now you have access to all your guts. And you can see the 415 there. You can see a Tula star there. I have a correct Tula star on the hammer. Now, when you can actually get onto a lot of gun forum uh, boards and they can tell you a lot to see if uh, your gun is rearsenaled, they can look at the numbers, they can look at the designs of the numbers. They're really, really, it's a very, very helpful community. The Nagant community is a great group of people. And if you really want to get into it, you can have a lot of fun just uh, you know, looking through and looking at every little piece and, and enjoying your Nagant. And if you look on here, you'll see that on this one, uh, the plate does match up as well. I actually really like uh, the wood that they, they put in here for 
the the back right here i love the uh the look of that i just think that disassembling a firearm and putting it back together is a whole lot of fun and then putting it back together is just the same thing in reverse and um these are just fun fun guns and you know it right now uh, they're not quite as cheap as they were when they first came in the country, but they're still relatively inexpensive, and it's a great way to get a piece of history. So this particular one definitely was in service in some way in World War II, which I think that is absolutely cool. Um, and, you know, if you can get one with one of these 32 ACP cylinders, it's, uh, you know could be an inexpensive thing to shoot uh, on mine my uh original nagant um cylinder is fluted here where the 32 acp is not but also to show so this is the nagant the uh rounds will just seat just right like that whereas if you tried to put a 32 acp due to the dimensions it'll just sink right in and then you end up in a situation like this where that obviously will not fire and vice versa the 32 acp will come in but the nagant round will not seat so it's pretty safe uh to be able to have the two cylinders there's a very little chance that you're going to make a mistake and end up with kind of like a catastrophic failure or anything to that effect uh, again this is just a lot of fun you can enjoy this particular gun and um, the recoil impulse is not bad at all from everything that I've heard. Uh, so I am really excited to uh, get this to the range and uh, do a little shooting with this and the uh, 32 ACP. So I want to thank everybody for supporting me. I'm sorry it's been a little bit since I posted my last video. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Please hit that like button. Go ahead and share this with anybody that you think might enjoy a little bit of history, a little bit of the bucket coming at you, and you stay classy, YouTube. Little middle baby bucket, do you want to live in California? No. Why? Because I'm not a communist.